indeed uh, come all the way back to England um, because we've had a big old battle uh, oh. between Manchester City and the Premier League. Both. Legal the... boys. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll leave that there. <laughs> um, both have claimed victory in this battle. Of course, the war is still yet to be won mm. between these two. But yes, on Monday it was announced that Man City had two complaints upheld in their ongoing case against the Premier League over Associated Party Transactions, or APTs, if you will, uh, which are commercial deals involving clubs and companies to which the club has close ties. Mm. Of course, the Man City owners uh, being from uh, where they are, if there's sponsorship deals with you know airlines or whatever from that place, you know, is it, uh, are they saying, well, hang on, you can't just do that. You're almost sort of paying out your own pocket and, mm. and, and so on and so forth. So you get the you get the gist. But this was very much about the loan side of things. The loan side of things, yeah. yes. There, there's, there's a bit of detail in there which you can you know read the articles because uh, uh, you know it, it, sometimes it, you just get bogged down, and we don't want to be too heavy on this. But it is a big story, of course. Now the case was initially reported as a victory for Manchester City. However, the by, by, by Man City. City. Well, indeed, yes. I said, yeah, I just, uh, that is a Tru- detail. It was that I... very Trumpian in its. Uh, in its <laughs> yeah, we had like about a hundred complaints uh, mm. towards the uh, Premier League, and yeah. we've managed to get two in. That's a victory. <laughs> it is a victory. <laughs> They've shown some sort of weakness, and we'll take it. Um, the the Premier League statement reads differently, saying the Premier League welcomes the tribunal's findings. We knew it was. We knew we had a couple of things to tidy up. So there, mm. um, they, they, they which endorsed. So, so the Premier League uh, welcomes the tribunal findings, which endorse the overall objectives, framework, and decision making of the APT system. The tribunal upheld the need for the APT system as a whole and rejected the majority of Man City's challenges. So. It's basically the Premier League going, well, we were nearly all right. There's a couple of tweaks we're going to make them. Ah, but there were tweaks, weren't there? Yeah, I mean, trying to undermine them, Peter. At at best, it's a slight undercutting of the Premier League's authority, meaning that a lot of their rules. Yeah, but it's an undercutting, Peter. Their rules and regs, uh, they've managed to sort of shoot themselves in the foot by not performing their processes and responsibilities in timely fashion, which means that um, Mm -hmm. Manchester City have been able to land a a glove, uh, but it's a very small glove uh, in a room full of bigger gloves, one would suggest. (laughs) Presumably. (laughs) It's a glove emporium, Andy. It it is, presumably. It makes you think of Masters of the Universe. (laughs) Yeah, presumably. Very tiny butter knife. (laughs) I have a butter knife. (laughs) 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 It's a bit I don't remember on that, but um, presumably, Andy, this is um, this is this is welcome news for Manchester City in that they will hope that this will somehow influence the um, the bigger battle against the Premier League. Well, they will because it's about the Premier League's right to govern, basically. Mm, yeah. that, that That is the main thrust of those 130 charges, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So the, the, the problem is with, as you say, getting bogged down in the detail, and in general, the reporting of this, is the fact that most major institutions, and these two are not separate from that, project in such a gaslighty way mm. that it's like it, it, it's, you don't have to report everything like it's a football result like, yeah. <laughs> we've had victory yeah. here <laughs> and we've had victory here if it's if it's nuanced it's not a headline does it and does it, it does it just show that the 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 gutting of most sort of news desks and, and people actually know what they're talking about uh, means that uh, people are just rewriting press releases anyway my god there's a hell of a lot of sports lawyers on television <laughs> and in newspapers at the moment so i'm not sure i'd agree with that bit <laughs> because it, it turns out there's a lot, There's a of, lot them of them around, there. right? There's okay, a lot fine. of them out there. I've had a few. I've had a few press uh, pieces sort of going. Well, this is what it means, and they're all using like football vernacular. It's one nil at the end of a match. Mick, just tell me what the problem is. Tell me what's happened. I'd, honestly, I'm expecting Sky Sports News to have a little pop up going. And now I'm speaking to uh, Pete Donaldson, <laughs> <laughs> sports Hello. lawyer. They've, they've, it's a glove emporium, guys. Um, you, we need a new. You've man. seen a glove emporium before. We need a new man on the street. I feel. Yeah, that's you. you need a thick person just to sort of bring people down to my level. I didn't say thick. I did. Also, okay. look at that facial hair. He's, he's got business lunch written all over him. Exactly. He's, got, he's got business lunch actually in his whiskers. I've got croissants. I've got croissant in my whiskers at the moment. Oh yeah. dear. It's now, a croissant emporium. I it, there's a lot of emporiums. I mean, were you were you heartened, uh, Peter, that um, during the hearing that uh, your beloved Newcastle United, among uh, a couple of others, Chelsea and Everton, all acted as witnesses for Man City? Yeah, it just makes me feel good about my life and my choices <laughs> and my football team. Um, yeah, I mean Everton, like, what are you doing there? Do you, do you want another two points off? I think I naughty think, lads, I getting think, involved. I think Everton think. Mm, yeah, there's that other thing that we haven't quite solved. Let's let's side up to the big boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. It's, it's about aligning themselves against the, the Premier League, isn't it? Uh-huh. 
And again, it's a little bit gaslighting. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, Chelsea and Newcastle, did that surprise you, Andy? No, <laughs> not <laughs> even <laughs> slightly. <laughs> not even slightly. Whereas, whereas some people, some might say we're, we're fighting the good fight. Although, can you fight the good fight if you are siding with the Premier League? I mean, let's be honest. Both parties yeah. involved are hardly <laughs> gleam, g- clean, you clean know, living. E- the, the, yeah, genuine sort of uh, The thing bodies. is, if we can try and boil this down to something quite simple, mm, yes. which I, I, I said I was against that the beginning, but we're going to try and do it. Right. Andy, in, you are the populist leader that we might ex- need. Exactly. So. You use a hand-wearing uh, vernacular? Okay. <laughs> Look, just pass me the fucking gloves, all right? <laughs> uh, I, I think the, the thing is, you, you would have to be quite dim or partisan to see this as the resounding victory that Manchester City are claiming. Yes. On the other hand, Ooh. I think you would have to be and- quite dim and partisan to think that everything, everything that the Premier League come out with yes. in any sort of case of this sort of magnitude. It's like you wrote the rules yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, why haven't these been... They may not have been tested in the real world, but why have you not just sort of maybe just drawn yourself a little spider diagram? Yeah. If this happens, what happens? Yeah, totally. If this happens, just logically go through every little rule about this, this situation. Yeah, but when no you say if it happens, it's been these. happening. Like, do you know mm. what I mean? Like, the, the, you're right, and it does... You that, have unlimited resources well, and, uh, to, uh, test the, to test these things out before you put them down. But for the for the big one that's coming, of course, with the... Um, I forget how many charges. It's 150, 130, whatever it is. Over 100 charges, because... Mm. This is not affecting that. I'm sure everyone is aware of that. I, I, Although people want to think that. Yeah, yeah. They, they do. Of yeah. Because of what Man City have said in press releases. The, the last thing you want is is the, the lawyers of the opposition to smell blood. And and as you say, they are going to repeatedly say this and undermine it. And you, you're, you're not trying to convince a computer system. You're trying to influence a human being and the, and the, and the panel and, or whoever's making the case. Fine, but like, pre- like legal precedent is legal precedent and that's what rules over everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm it's, pretty it's, sure. it's, it's not just a random jury. These are judges who know their, know their of, stuff. Of, of course, but they are also aware that there's been a little sort of chink in the, in the Premier League's armour here. But uh, anyway, uh, I'm, I'm sort of you know, getting ahead of myself a little yeah. bit there. But there's, there's no doubt that Manchester City will, will be thinking, great, OK, that is... That is some kind of a blow landed. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure the Premier League used to be clearer in its authority. Yes. Um, it doesn't feel as if it's as clear in its authority or its its, its communication as mm. a, a few years ago. Now, I think at least part of that, you have to say, on the other hand, is due to the, 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 the changing landscape of football mm-hmm. and the changing financial landscape of, of, of football. And I think there's always been an assumption with the Premier League that... Well, everyone's getting paid. Yeah. Look, look at us. Like, you know, La Liga want to be us. Serie A want to mm-hmm. be us. So so, so we're fine. The detail doesn't yeah. really matter. Yeah. It feels like there's been so much money in it that everyone's fed and there'll be no complaints. Mm. But now we're getting to the point where there is there are complaints, especially in terms of governance and especially with the threat, as the Premier League would see it, of an independent regulator coming in. Although, to me, it seems like something quite thorny that maybe a Labour government wouldn't want to get involved with at this, <laughs> at this very moment. I, I think with that, this is the worst point for the Premier League to be under this sort of scrutiny. Mm. Well, they do have uh, witnesses backing them, Andy, which did include Manchester United, Liverpool, Arsenal, Tottenham, Brighton um, uh, and West Ham. Brentford, Bournemouth, Fulham and Wolves also wrote letters in support of the rules. We're just going to write a letter, can't be bothered. <laughs> um, uh, so, so so, there is all that um, to... Um, to a rip switch in this, to in all of this. They're yeah, a Premier well, League club, get involved. They are there for the turning. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, so th- there's been a lot of chat about this and there will continue to be. But as we say, it is not the big beefy case um, that, that, that's obviously directly related to the, the infamous 130 charges against Manchester City for allegedly breaching its financial regulations. But this is all stuff that the Premier League ultimately could do without. And it does seem quite funny to me that this, as you, as you were saying, this very kind of seemingly very tight and, and well-oiled machine has showed a few little... Um, I suppose weak spots for 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 want of a better yeah, word. Yeah. And uh, is it well oiled? Has it ever been well oiled? Well, it was, it was, no, it was ostensibly bit... at least. Hmm. Cons- but, 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 when you're working with so many compa- kind of like the wild west of foot- larger you're, football, but you're comparing it. You can only compare it to other leagues in the world, as Andy mm. has already done. And the Premier League is by far the wealthiest beast mm. of all of them. Yeah, and if it's and going, every, if look, it's every, going well financially, people don't really care about well, the details. So I guess yeah. that's the whole point, isn't right. it? Really, but, but it's the old adage of that you know every empire you know eventually sort of comes to an end. 
again, doesn't it? And the Premier League, but with the challenge of the Super League not that long ago, which they were kind of bailed out by f- supporters of clubs and so on, and this, that, and the other, they've got to they've got to up their game. They've got to be mm. they've got to be better, mm. quite frankly. Um, so yes, this uh, is well, not would, classic they, Barclays, is it? This is not, classic no, Barclays. No, it's not. Well, they need that. Then maybe they need that sponsor maybe. back. <laughs> maybe they need Barclays back. Who have never put a foot wrong. But the, the, <laughs> as far as I'm aware, the Premier, <laughs> the Premier League will never face a bigger challenge at Manchester City mm. because mm. they're the richest club there is, uh, who are more lawyered up than anyone else. Yeah. Um, so I, I think it's. It's difficult. To, it's been very difficult for the Premier League to manage the whole Man City thing publicly, hasn't it? Mm-hmm. Because, of course, when you see the volume of charges, people immediately think, "Why, why, why are they getting away with it?" Because the perception is, if there's not, if it's not an open and shut case and dealt with like that, then they're getting away with it. Mm-hmm. You know, there's the sense that it's been left adrift. But I don't think that's fair or reasonable at all to the Premier League because the reality is, it's a hundred. 30 charges which is an incre- you can't even imagine the amount of detail mm-hmm. and paperwork against the club who will have like the, the 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 best legal representation that you could possibly ask for who are clearly trying to obfuscate and mm-hmm. have been the, the the whole time so i think that they've got to a point where they've got the end in sight you know this this is city trying to you know, pick holes in the jumper and hope hope it sort of all comes apart, really, aren't they? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. All right, everybody. Well, we shall see how uh, well-knitted that Premier League jumper is, of course, <laughs> in the months to come. All right, everybody. Uh, coming up after this, Jürgen Klopp is back. See you in a moment. Kept out at the near post by Marin again. Dragashin's header fell rather awkwardly for uh, Amadou Anana. Andre's not even my name, mate. <laughs> Love a bit of Clark Tilsley. I'd never heard that before. No, mate. I've never heard that before. That's what you come to the football ramble for, Andy. Stuff that you've never do. heard before. <laughs> I, I, I don't come to the football ramble to hear Clive Tilsley. But do, no. you, do you come do for you... the great coffee and vibes? <laughs> <laughs> what about the energy drinks? The energy drinks. Well, coffee is an energy drink. Uh, I've already started the deal with the monster, so I'm very. I'm the expert. I'm the resident um, uh, Red Bull slash energy drink expert. I think is that what the kids are doing instead of TVR these days? Yeah, what, monster and cappuccino. <laughs> That'd be a combination. Um, well, what so, do you think then that Jurgen Klopp has been appointed head of global soccer at Red Bull? Mm. That's one in the eye for you and the monster drinkers. It, it is. <laughs> I don't think. I think. I think. I think monster are probably they're probably more e-sporty, aren't they? Oh yeah, they are. They're probably Massively. a bit more a bit more Massively. of that mm. that space. I would say. They're yes. probably, um, I've got a press release here. It says uh, Pete Donaldson has been uh, appointed a head of uh, global shenanigans. <laughs> <at> <laughs> monster. <laughs> I'm like a rabble rouser. You are. Yeah. Uh, but that's why Slash we terrorist. You. Um, Come on. Well, yeah. The uh, I would say that. Um, <laughs> I would, it, would it be fair to say that this is a bigger story for? Or Germany than it is here because we don't have quite such strong opinions about. Are you not what, outraged, man? About what Red Bull are up to in uh, in our country? What they're up to? <laughs> what they're up to? What, 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 what they are up to? I mm. think that's that, that's fair. To so yes. having just chatted about the 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 capitalist machine, the Premier League. Mm. Yeah, we, this wouldn't really bother too many people here in Germany. It's, it's quite a different story well, they're not, it, with they're regards not, to football. Well, they're not quite as kind of visible in media, I would say, over here, because we've got our a psychotic Australian, haven't we, who, 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 who does terrible things Don't here. Don't say that Ange. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's... Uh, but, but, but over in, in Germany, obviously, he, he funds a lot of um, right-wing... Or he did. He died, didn't he? Yeah, he, 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 he did. Mass shit's died, yeah. Mm, um, he funds a lot of... Um, Right wing uh, uh, media, let's say. Right wing is a mild way. Of is a mild it. way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it's a, it's a bright part for the for the sausage guy, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, they, 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 yeah. There you go. But we know that, that RB Leipzig, for, for example, divide opinion enormously in, in mm. Germany. Well, no, they actually they, 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 they don't. <laughs> Everyone hates them. <laughs> might, no, but, but in the interest of balance, there must be a couple of people who like it. Andy. But anyway, <laughs> but you're right. Probably. So, yeah. so the, the brand Red Bull is uh, is obviously seen as a very different way in in in, in Germany, and of course, in mm. football in Germany, is not. Um, the um, the wild free market economy that it is here. Klopp is now working for Red Bull. How's that gone down in Germany? Uh, not amazingly. No, I wouldn't uh, have thought and, it would. And it's, it's been a really big surprise to 
even in the no journalists around uh, Jurgen Klopp and around around Dortmund. They didn't see it coming. So, no, they didn't. Uh, uh, but what I think is interesting, there's a lot of logic to it in a in, in a funny sort of way because we, we talk about it being a surprise. Though the CEO of uh, uh, Borussia Dortmund, Hans Joachim Vatska, who knows him very well, has said, "Well, I knew already because he told me." And we yeah. talked about it. So, yeah. oh, and you would expect him to know it's coming because they're they're, they're relatively close. But so if you take the Red Bull bit out of it. Klopp taking this sort of job makes a lot of sense mm-hmm. because he's actually been good to his word, hasn't he? He, he said, you know, I'm, I feel like I've got no energy for frontline coaching anymore. Mm-hmm. He's discussed what he will be. <laughs> I got a solution for you, baby. There you go. <laughs> I mean, presumably, that's what's happened in the boardroom. They think, you're short of energy. Yeah. Can we send you a crate of this? Exactly. In fact, you want a job as well? He's going to be managing RB Leipzig by the end of the month. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> be refueled. It depends how quickly he gets through the case, really, imagine doesn't that, it? Imagine that big grin. <laughs> <laughs> he'd, be, he'd, be, he'd be more animated his, than ever. Crunching his t- He'd be uh, reviving the shaman before the end of the week, Ah, wouldn't he? Is it the pop group we should specify? Yeah, that's (laughs) right. (laughs) Should we? It's pretty obvious. It's like some shaman. Not not to anybody under 30. The football shaman. (laughs) Right. I I, I think when when you look at Klopp taking this kind of upstairs job, it Mm. makes a lot of sense. He still wants to be involved in football. He's still passionate about football, but Mm. he doesn't have the energy for the day to day. And he's talked about his role being a sort of of mentor to the coaches in the in the, in the Red Bull family, if you like, because of course you have um, the Red Bull family. His words, not mine. But uh, even st- it is a little bit of a surprise that he's yeah yeah it's weird. There's no doubt about it. Right. But but I, I think if you look at it just from uh, mm-hmm. the sort of job that he wants at this point, it makes a lot of sense. So he's basically uh, like Twilight career of Samuel Jackson. Now, yeah, I'll do it. Whatever. Just anything, that, yeah, fine, it's a pay packet, I'll be in that film, and just any old thing. Are you so. saying it's Bob De Niro and Meet the Parents? There you go. <laughs> really, like, is it not more like Arsene Wenger, kind of just floating around? No, because Wenger was... What is he working for FIFA, isn't he? Yeah, but Pete's, Pete's got a point, actually, because Wenger f- feels like, you know, he's the sort of cornerstone of morality in the football mm. world and fighting the good fight, and all of a sudden he, you know... No, but he wants just, to play a massive club world cup. Money talks, baby. <laughs> he does, but he's also like trying to implement sort of or, or suggest weird rule changes. It's like he's got a lab coat on and he's just like, yeah, lots of football's happening. It's all a bit weird, which he kind of like. He, he what was he called? The scientist or something when he first came here. He did look like he professor. Kind of, the professor. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So uh, yeah, but I, look at anyway. Um, it, it, Klopp but like, is, but but what was but Klopp's kind of whole kind of stock in trade was honesty. Um, being a, a someone who stood up for the little guy, and and he would constantly talk about you know your fishing congestion, um, uh, mm-hmm. Man City, Newcastle coming the, into the fall and stuff. He would constantly back himself as being someone who was on the right side of history. Yeah, I'm one of you. I'm one of the fans. Yeah. Which is what you know, Dortmund. That's their kind of shtick, mm. and Liverpool is a bit of that as well. Yeah. Um, and you thought that you know the type of clubs he 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 he's managed, and yeah. maybe was he going to go and manage another one? It, mm. Just again, this this huge kind of. Corporation, it's it's a slight. Maybe that was the only place that the money was was there. Well, yeah, I mean, I think. Look, I'm not I'm not particularly disappointed in him or anything like that. But but it is a surprise, and as you said, Andy, it is a bit weird that he's he's done this. I mean, Mm. on the appointment, he said after almost 25 years on the sideline, we should say sideline, not sidelines, because it's a little bit different. Uh, I could not be more excited to get involved in a project like this. The role may have changed, but my passion for football and the people who make the game what it is has not. Is he has he been playing paddle with a, an, a, a Red Bull um, big inevitably? Big? That's yeah. where this is. What that just feels it, it like. really does. It's the sunshine. It? It's like you know, Jurgen. Can you just watch it? Watch a few football clips. Tell he us fell what's asleep. Going on. He fell asleep with his finger on the remote control, and the number of channels went up to like eight hundred and three. And he watched like a soapbox derby or a plane doing yeah. a loop de loop, and he went, oh, "What is this company?" Yeah, I that's... Like the <laughs> do, they, do they still do that stuff, Red Bull? Yeah, I liked, I it, when, I liked it when they were doing. He's doing quite good video game journalism back in the Did day really? weirdly yeah. yeah but like it would just be kind of people throwing themselves off into a river and stuff you know yeah. it'd be like oh, where the fans oh, this is a Red Bull thing and it's I, a Red Bull thing yeah it's kind of like I no, mean, if no point ever... am I going to attend this but like for, <laughs> for 10 me. minutes on a Sunday afternoon I bloody well will watch it <laughs> Well, well, if they try and get him into any of those sports he does have a get out in the contract for one specific job doesn't he yes he can he can go to he can go to Germany. He has a, a get out to take the Germany national team. I thought you were going to see England there. Right? It sounds very much like he wants that job. Like this could be a, a four four month job, surely. But that's that's the thing, isn't it? Mm. it, it it's, it's something that 
makes sense for where he's at at the moment. Mm. Now, I, I know there will be, be people saying, well, he, he only just left Liverpool. This role doesn't actually start until the 1st of January, so yeah. th- th- this is a while yet. And, of course, the job that might have made a lot of sense for him. Could, as you, we not, spoke... could you not have made it 2nd of Jan? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give yourself a day. That's what the Red Bull's for. Can you imagine how many, <laughs> how, many, how, many ca- how many packs of Red Bull people are getting in their Christmas box? Oh, God, this again. <laughs> Working from home, God not, not been to bed yet. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas you're set there like Eric called monster, 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 monster. <laughs> but I, I think if you look at the Germany job would have made a lot of sense for him in the fact that he doesn't feel he can do day-to-day mm. football management anymore. If, if, if you take him at his word on mm. that, mm-hmm. the Germany job makes a, a, a lot of sense for him. But of course, it's not gettable at the moment because Julian Nagelsmann signed a new contract off the back of the Euros. Julian will probably be there for a bit. And he feels like he's really getting his hands dirty with the job. So it it almost feels like, as you say, a sort of staging period until the Germany job opens up. Oh, there we are. Mm. Oh, yeah, Andy, it's his life, isn't it? He can do what he wants within the realms of the law. You put you put Bon Jovi into everything, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, for more on, on, on this, Andy... You're true to your values. Uh, very much so. <laughs> um, uh, for more on this, you can listen to tomorrow's On the Continent where Andy mm. and co. will be getting their teeth into it. Now, everybody, let's go back to Manchester. It's been reported that the Manchester United Chiefs met yesterday to decide on Eric Ten Hag's future. Uh, Sir Jim Ratcliffe headed up the meeting, which is thought to be a regular diary appointment. Okay, that's, that's so let's all just, let's all just calm month, down. monthly booking, isn't it, really? Yeah, it's kind of like, we're going gonna to reassess Eric Ten Hag every yeah. month. <laughs> yellow. Oh, good. I didn't Brilliant. think of it like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rude van Nistelrooy is said to be a potential potential option as caretaker manager should he be needed do you think part of this has been informed by that photo in the guardian yesterday where you've got ten hag on the touchline yep. and you have van Nistelrooy behind him looking very stern and pointing towards the exit door it could be Andy. <laughs> i think the owners of the football club have looked at that and thought oh yeah I, there's an idea I, th- I think the universe is trying to tell us something <laughs> uh, but it is interesting obviously van Nistelrooy going there knows the club a legend there etc cetera, etc cetera. he's also a manager and and by it's, it's his... not it's not appointing Ryan Giggs, is it? That's the point. Thank goodness for that. Mm. Yes. Uh, but you're right. Uh, you know, Van Nistelrooy has worked at um, age cap level in in in, in various different um, places. Yeah. Assistant at uh, the Dutch national team, of mm. course. But head, most, co- head coach at PSV. But most notably at PSV, where they finished second in the league, only uh, behind um, Arne Slot's Feyenoord. They won the cup as well. Mm. Um, it was a pretty decent season all round by um, by the looks of it. I think he left. What was it? What one game before the end of the season because he cited that he wasn't supported enough or whatever right. it was. You can um, say under a cloud of dressing room fallout. There we go. <laughs> uh, let's what, do that. What, what was the what, what were the reasons for Van der taking a second in command job at this part? Is he just got ambitions to get into the Premier League and this is a really good kind of testing ground for him? I, th- I think <laughs> yeah, that's that's al- that's always the thing. If you're appointed as an assistant to an existing head coach, especially an existing head coach that's not going that well, and you've got that history. Yeah. It's a, a little bit like when Yuri Shahin showed up as Dortmund assistant coach halfway right. through last season. Mm. And you thought, has he really come back if he hasn't got so, at least Ambitions, some sort of reasonable yeah. prospect of, of getting a go at the job at some point? Ding, 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 ding. I'm t- hearing the succession theme tune in my head. Yeah, exactly. Are they going to um, be unveiled as co-managers? Soon? That would be the best one. Wouldn't it? You don't get co-managers anymore. Um, yeah, I, I look to me that looks like should it all kind of go wrong and they can't find anybody who fancies it. We've read the newspapers lately, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, the, the, the thing Van is, like... is there as, at least as caretaker. But mm. I mean, look, they ha- I mean, there was reports that, um, was it Wilcox sat down with uh, Thomas Tuchel right. in the beautiful oh. surroundings of Monaco, apparently, in the summer. So, like, <laughs> just the situation, again, we've talked about and talked about, it. it's, it's just so obvious. There's a, there's a difference between, like, talks and being offered the job. Mm. But what, I, mean, I, mean, I would be really surprised if... if Tuchel would be inclined to accept it at the moment. At this stage? Yeah, at this stage. Do you think it's too much? Yeah, I I think there's there's too much to unpick. I I think Van Nistelrooy, having him there is is really handy because he's a capable coach, because he has a lot of credit from his playing career. And because you talked about a a caretaker manager, well, when we talk about a caretaker manager, we normally think about someone who's in charge for three weeks Mm -hmm. until they get the new guy they want. That is not what we are talking about with Ruud van Nistelrooy. We 
are saying that if it gets so bad, and maybe this is why he was always there, because if it gets so bad with Ten Hag that they have to get rid of him, and you know, Ineos have rather hope that that isn't the case. They hope that they can ride the Ten Hag train for for a while, but obviously that's proving a little bit problematic. Be end of season at best, and, and even then. But I I think it's hard to imagine him going that long, and I think we all imagine it's uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's quite hard for him to go that long. Mm-hmm. If you were to bin Ten Hag, say three weeks from now Mm -hmm. or three months from now if Van Nistelrooy was to see it through to the end of the season that wouldn't feel like a massive problem no 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 that's the thing we're not talking about three or four weeker here and Van Nistelrooy would take it Mm. Yeah, of course. Do you know what I mean? Because you're saying that Tuchel cool and maybe one or two others are thinking, let's just see how. I'd, I'd, I'd rather someone else sort out the, the difficult bits, untangle Absolutely. the ball of wool a little bit, yes. and then I'll knit the jumper in, in six months' time. There you go. You jumpers again, Andy. Yeah. You'll be using them for goalposts soon. Um, <laughs> that well, kind of weather, innit? Yeah, it is. Well, Andy, um, you're saying that Eric Ten Hag might not last very long. Um, I'm saying that as well. Everybody's saying that, really. Well, <laughs> David Moyes saying that. has come out and said he thinks Eric Ten Hag is, is doing well. He said, I think he's doing a brilliant job. He showed brilliant resilience. He's yeah. also making my spell at Manchester United look better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. It's uh, brilliant resilience. Um, how about that? Um, Wayne Rooney appeared to blame the players uh, recently and said that Ten Hag is a fantastic manager. So he's... It's very much in the manager's union here, isn't it? It, it is. Like, it I don't is. think Wayne Rooney would be saying that if, they, if he wasn't in the role at Plymouth. Do you think? I think he'd be like, that's rubbish. Get yeah, out. maybe. I did, yeah. I did. But, he, I mean, he has said that the players need to kind of up it a bit, to, mm. to say the least. But, you know, important that uh, Ten Hag is um, is getting uh, support from from uh, some Manchester United legends. Yeah, legends. Um, <laughs> you do so. you do get the sense that like um, a lot of these players will have played under two or three uh, uh-huh. managers at Manchester United, and wh- whoever comes in, you're like, right, let's do this. They would be like, yeah. we've tried loads of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we are rubbish. <laughs> let's we, no, uh-huh. we tried playing well. It worked for one match. Let's yeah. just leave it. Uh-huh. We you, tried that. <laughs> What are you suggesting, Pete? Just disband the club altogether? Just disband the, yeah, just give it up. Give it to RB. Give it to the RB boys. They know what they're doing. They are, you see. Might get Klopp. Might get Klopp. There you are. Exactly. I thought that was not RB Manchester United. Beautiful. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, in other managerial news, let's go down uh, to the Football League because Charlton manager Nathan Jones, you remember him? Um, He's uh, very uh, vocal and weird. <laughs> once of Southampton, mm-hmm. of course. Yep. Jim often described him as uh, sounding like a man who has a knife between his teeth. Um, he's hit out against the Charlton fans who criticised him uh, and his team selections. And he said, if people want to trust me to manage the football club, then fine. But if the fans want to pick teams themselves, then come in. I'll have my money and I'll move somewhere else if that's what <laughs> needs to be done. <laughs> he's, for, uh, for someone who's so on the edge, he, he's surprisingly thin-skinned. Yeah. Yeah, it's true, actually. Yeah, I mean, but do you not think a lot of people on the edge are? Hence, they're on the edge. If they were, yeah, if they were uh, a bit thicker skinned, maybe they would be calmer and a bit more to that creamy middle, Andy. Yeah, maybe maybe you got a point there. Mm. But I think seeing as he's such a, a character, shall we say, <laughs> for him to come out and make a big thing of something that well, simply every manager who's ever managed <laughs> has, has, has enjoyed. With, yeah. It turns out the fans disagree with you in this job. Yeah. Who knew? Mm. I mean, at least, you know, you think of someone like quite combustible, like I, I suppose I mentioned him relatively regularly, but John Sitton in that... Um, <laughs> In that Orient for a Fiver documentary, um. when when he thinks this, he at least keeps it in the confines of the dressing room. You know that great line. That, there are lots of great lines yeah. in the book where he goes, "If I'm going to have to take a load of abuses from the cockroaches sat behind cockroaches. the cockroaches, <laughs> I'll, I'll take it by doing it my way." It's class, isn't it? I, ju- yeah. I just think that um, he he strikes me as being a, a man who's got a lot of burner accounts. Do you know what I mean? What, Nathan he's, Jones. Yeah, he strikes mm. me as being he's he's terminally online and he's terminally upset with what people are saying. <laughs> yeah. Just turn off your computer mate yeah. just get on so, with so, the job. so you're saying maybe no one's abusing him it's his burner accounts that are abusing yes. him so he can make a big thing he's of it t- he's Nathan Jones Tyler Durden kind of guy he's like he's, he's, <laughs> he's getting up at 3am just to abuse himself on Twitter maybe that's it or they could I mean if you if you really wanted to um, to, to challenge the fans and shut them up I think mm. you could take a leaf out of old Harry Redknapp's book when he was West Ham manager that, that famous time pre-season friendly was it in, brought him on was it in Oxford right. maybe one of the Oxford I can't remember where it was and, uh, and, you he, always, and he brought you the always put yourself in a cul-de-sac of not being able to remember some really obscure trivia. You sort of go, what was it? It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> crack on. Okay, well, have, you, have you got a suggestion? Why not? It's Oxford. Right. Yeah. But there's Oxford City and United it and I don't want matter. to disrespect It's fine, them. I know, but I just don't like it. It's self-flagellation. Yeah, and I enjoy that. <laughs> um, yeah, let's, let's, let's have a little thing. It was an English club. <laughs> 
Uh, but anyway, he brought Shaxi that. Cyclopedia. He, he, he brought the guy on, didn't he? Yeah, he did. But didn't he hit the pause? Hit the pause, didn't he? Well, like, there's, there's, there's a bit of right. Redknapp said. I think this we on... get confused between him and Ali D- Dyer. I don't. Ali Dyer. Ali Dyer. Which one's the um, legendary Iranian? Yeah, Ali, you Ali. doing it yourself? <laughs> Ali Dyer. Ali Dyer was the was the footballer who was rubbish. Claimed to be the cousin of yeah. George Wade. Ali Dyer. Ali, Ali Dyer. Dyer. Yeah. Scored a lot of goals. God damn it! Yeah. 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 Right. Good. But uh, but yes, uh, not him. But the, yeah, the guy <laughs> Redknapp brought on. It, Harry Redknapp says he scored. Some people present, but I think he did. He not score, but it was given offside. Can, right. Can, can okay. I just say Harry Redknapp has yeah. been deeply undermined Ooh. by Luke Moore. All football being. <laughs> Like recorded on video. Now, yes. <laughs> yeah. oh, he, couldn't have, he couldn't have survived in this. Yeah. Uh, no, no. Apocryphal stories are, are, are tougher when it's actually there. He's JD Vance. Oh. I, you might got to fact check me. That's that, not allowed. That's why I can't remember because every time he tells a story, it's a different club in Oxford. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, dearie me. All right. Well, coming up after this, um, a man with integrity um, has got Portland Timbers on the march. Oh, dear. <laughs> Right then, everybody, before we get to Fizzer, Pete Donaldson, you've got an email. Uh, I have got an email, and it is from Joe. Hi, Ramblers. I know you have an interest in the college uh, American football after Pitbull bought the naming rights to the FIU Stadium. So here's another college football story I thought you might be interested in. Last weekend, Vanderbilt University, unranked, uh, beat the University of Alabama, number one among the NCAA college American football teams, and the fans celebrated a lot. Here is a snippet from the ESPN article uh, talking about the consequences. Vanderbilt, a first-time offender, was fined uh, $100,000 after its 40-35 um, win over Alabama. It was the school's first win over an one team. Fans tore down a goalpost mm. and dumped it in the Cumberland River, <laughs> two and a half miles from the stadium. <laughs> members, Where's the nearest river? Members of the Metro Nashville Fire Department retrieved it from the river to keep it from being a hazard. Uh, and Vanderbilt took advantage by setting up an auction to sell pieces of it. <laughs> they stormed the fields. They tore down a goalpost. They carried the goalpost for two and a half miles and they dumped the goalpost in the river. And they're eating the dogs and cats and of the people in the river. dogs and cats. Joe, I mean, what a, what a performance uh, from the from the, what's the thing? What's the thinking behind that? It's never going to ah! get any... Yeah. <laughs> this is the thinking behind it. It's, ah! it's never going to get any better than this. We yeah. can't play American yeah. football no ever again. Posts. Yeah. That's it. It's, I, think, it I think once the posts fall down, you're oh. like... Hide the body. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Hide yeah. the body I and mean, move it is state last days of Rome stuff, isn't it? Yeah. But I, yeah, I, you, often, you, you hear that from one or two fans. It's quite odd that um, when, I don't know, uh, Jonathan Wilson tells a story of when mm. Sunderland won the FA Cup, his father was like, in that moment of jubilation and joy, yeah. there's also sadness because I'll never be as good as this. No, which yeah, is, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. Like, it, it's something that I would... Just, it would never. Th- I would never no, think massive. of that. No, I think. I think. I think. Uh, I think stuff like that. I was thinking about. Yeah, but you're from the northeast of England, like he is. So <laughs> maybe there's something different. That cup there. final at Wembley. I was like, I mean, if we win, it's going to be bad, and if it's we lose, it's going to be bad. Do you know what I mean? It's all going to be bad. Andy, do, do you relate to this? No. Yeah, really. I don't know. Either. I don't get it. But maybe those fans. Andy's have kind been adopted of, by the dark side. <laughs> maybe those fans are. They, they're kind of trying to game the system. Maybe they're all thinking it'll never be as good as this. So let's bloody well enjoy it. Yeah, exactly, yeah. That, that's the thing. Because because this this story certainly the way it was written in the ESPN article that Joe sent to us the the twist in there you yeah. can't see the bit where the goalpost was torn down coming no. mm. because it says <laughs> Vanderbilt a first time offender I'm thinking that's because they've beaten a number one ranked team yes and then it says they were fined a hundred thousand dollars for their forty thirty five win. Uh, they weren't fined for the win, it yeah, turns yeah, out. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it takes quite a twist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a, a corrupt system, Andy, if it, if it was for that. Uh, yeah. It's a bit Hanshin Tigers throw on the um, KFC Colonel statue into the river, the Dottenbury River, if you oh, know that one. I mentioned it on the show. No before. way. Is that right? They, when they won, um, they used to jump in. If you looked like one of the players, they'd line up against the. I'll, I'll just tell the story again. Go on, then, fine. You, li- you line up, um, <clears throat> if uh, basically they hadn't won for absolutely ages and they won the league or whatever the best ball league system is in, in Japan. Pan. And um, they've got a big river, Dottenbury River, it's like the, a very small version of the Thames, lovely little oh, canal right. job. And um, uh, where every, they'd all sort of line up the fans of Hanshin Tigers, and if one, they would shout out the roster of players. And if you looked a little bit like that player, you'd jump in the river. <laughs> But uh, in the 90s, I think it was 90, yeah, no, no, sorry, 1985, 1985. No, I don't, no, I don't. In 1985, didn't have a, they had a few American players, so uh-huh. they didn't have any Americans supporters. So they grabbed a big statue from outside KFC, threw it in the river. Amazing. And then the, the curse so began, the, and they never won there's again. There's a statue of Colonel Sanders outside. Outside Colonel. every KFC, pretty much, yeah. So Colonel Sanders, 
Zlatan Saddam Hussein. Yeah. In an exclusive all been, little club. All being toppled. <laughs> yeah. What about the one in Bristol? Yeah. That one. Don't um, forget that one. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cromwell, wasn't it? It's Cromwell? No, it's not Cromwell. Who was it then? <laughs> I've, Colston. Look, I've, I've put Colston. myself in there. It was Colston. It was Colston. Well done. Cromwell. I, I did criticise you. I always say no to Colston and KFC. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure a Cromwell statue has come down somewhere. Yeah. Maybe not on this island. But Jebediah anyway, Springfield. L- 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 yeah, another one. <laughs> another one. <laughs> you, yeah, if you could... I'm trying to think. If you could topple it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> a, a discussion perhaps for a ramble uncut. Um, well... Henri let- one. No, Henri knee slide. <laughs> Take it right off. That'd be an odd one, wouldn't it? Yeah. For disrespecting Micah Richards so regularly on that American show. Oh, dear. Well, let, let's stay uh, in America um, and and let's go uh, to the Northwest, where oh, surely a statue oh, beckons uh, for God. this man. Portland Timbers have secured their spot in the 2024 MLS playoffs. Their spot was secure before they played FC Dallas on Sunday, thanks to results elsewhere. But they made sure by getting a very respectable nil-nil draw, Andy. Uh, it warms your cockles, doesn't it, to see that Fizz is taking care of business? <laughs> the Western Conference is going to be absolutely fire once we get into the playoffs. So think of it. You've got uh, Marco Royce led LA Galaxy. Oh, yeah. You've got the beauty of Loris and Giroud at mm. LAFC. And they're yeah. the top two in the, the who finished in yeah. the uh, division. Come, come, coming up against <clears throat> Fizzer. Yeah, I mean, I... <sighs> You know, I should say there's 14 teams in the in the in the league, and um, well, who cares about the other 11? Quite uh, frankly, well, yeah, uh, Portland finished ninth because that is good enough for the playoffs. That is good enough so, for the playoffs, uh, isn't it? Yeah, you know, absolutely you, fine. That so they and that's uh, they're saving themselves. Why finish? Why to, like exert yourself? I'm going to finish in the top. Whatever ninth is fine. Ninth is fine. I, I I would say that the Portland Timbers um, Reddit page is um, <clears throat> if you don't like Phil Neville and think he's a very limited man oh, and who manager, thinks that? who thinks that? Um, it, it's actually a bit of a disappointing because they really seem to like him. So. <laughs> Fuck off. Of course they do. Fuck I've off. been trying to say Throw this. Him in the vo- if they've got a volcano in Portland. Throw him in the volcano. <laughs> 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 it, within the city limits, there is a volcano. Hey, hey that's fire. Options, guys. Uh, do a Hanshin Tiger. I didn't know they had a volcano. That's fascinating. Yeah. Well, with nine games to go, uh, Fizzer did say every game was a cup final in order to he reach He said the that every week. You've done a quote Peter, from him. Well, every day is a cup final. Yeah, well, nine games. Nine games. They are. Oh, so I suppose, do they get and to he, the point where they go, next time you say that you're fired yeah. for what it's worth I don't think they'd throw him in the volcano that's a proper yeah. firing if, if you've seen the Lego Ninjago movie right. when Lord Garmadon is firing the people out of his volcano lair yeah. he goes to the like middle managers you're fired and then he shoots them shoot out them of the out top of it of the right okay Ooh. I think I mean it's dormant so you'd have to lop the top of it I think but oh yeah that's what Garmadon did yeah, yeah. No, they, we, they, they need to be some drilling anyway yeah mm. there's, there's a bit of admin to do but I'm mm. sure they can do it um, well he's in the playoffs they've got a chance um mm. Uh, Portland and that's that's all you can ask for really they're trying to win their first Major League Soccer Cup since 2015 can Fizzer 2015 is it God. coming home <laughs> <laughs> an epoch defining win <laughs> I don't know okay. I don't know show some fucking respect that's all I'm <laughs> oh, say, you Peter. got your button back have you yeah all you right. haven't hijacked it this week <laughs> oh dearie me thank you for watching a clip from the Football Ramble podcast uh, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss an upload a single upload don't miss out on the uploads the uploads are important